Fermi energy. What is Fermi energy? It is average energy level of different electrons that exists inside a semiconductor. Several electrons, several types of electrons exist inside semiconductor. In fact, no two electrons can have same energy levels. Different electrons all have different energy levels. Individual energy levels of electrons, they are not that much important, but average energy level has certain significance. This uh, average energy level is called Fermi energy. Fermi function. What is Fermi function? It is a probability function. It gives probability for an electron to have certain amount of energy. This function has also certain special significance in semiconductor theory. Mass action law. What is this mass action law? It says when a semiconductor slab is in equilibrium, the product of three electron and whole uh, concentration is a constant. This constant uh, is uh, equal to n i square n i is intrinsic carrier concentration. Notice this law says product of free electron and hole concentration. It is constant and it is valid both for uh, intrinsic as well as extrinsic. And also note that uh, this law is valid only under equilibrium conditions. Equilibrium. What is uh, equilibrium? The semiconductor slab is under equilibrium when there is no temperature gradient, when there is no concentration gradient, when there is no charge gradient, when there is no transport in that slab, then only it is said to be under equilibrium condition. Continuity equation. What is continuity equation? This is a partial differential equation. It is an outcome of charge conservation principle applied to carrier concentration in semiconductor materials. This equation is derived by considering four aspects that cause a change 
in the carrier concentration in a semiconductor. These four agencies are thermal generation, recombination, drift, and diffusion. Recombination. What is recombination? In simple terms, a free electron falling back into a vacancy that exists in a covalent bond is recombination. The vacancy in the covalent bond is usually called hole. In terms of energy band diagrams, energy band theory, recombination means a conduction band electron falling into valency band. During recombination, energy release takes place. There are Two ways basically in recombination. One way is electron simply and directly jumps from conduction band into valency band. This is called direct or band to band recombination. During direct recombination, the amount of energy that gets released is high, more. Another way of recombination is also there. In this recombination, the fall from conduction band into valency band is in steps. Maybe two, three. During this process, indirect recombination process, energy release is not that much as in case of direct uh, recombination and hence during uh, indirect uh, recombination, frequency of radiation is also not as great as the frequency of the energy that is released during direct uh, recombination. Electronic Devices Semiconductors Part 3 Series on Semiconductor Devices and Circuits Lecture Number 1.13 Semiconductors when pure are called intrinsic semiconductors. When pure, the conductivity of semiconductors is very low. To increase the conductivity, Pure or intrinsic semiconductors are added with the impurities. When impurities are added, intrinsic semiconductor becomes extrinsic uh, semiconductor. Depending upon the type of impurity, the free electron concentration or uh, hole concentration goes up. It results in uh, increased conductivity. So in uh, extrinsic semiconductors, the conductivity is more when compared to intrinsic semiconductors. In this session, the focus is on how conductivity is altered with the addition of impurities to a semiconductor. This aspect is described, discussed in detail right now. Let us move to begin the course session. Extrinsic semiconductors. When impurities are added 
तो ए प्योर सेमी कंडक्टर इंट्रेंसिक सेमी कंडक्टर इट बिकम्स एक्सट्रेंसिक सेमी कंडक्टर टू टाइप्स ऑफ एक्सट्रेंसिक सेमी कंडक्टर सर देर एन टाइप एंड पी टाइप If uh, n-type impurities are added to intrinsic semiconductor, then it is n-type extrinsic semiconductor. And if p-type impurities are added, then it is extrinsic p-type semiconductor. A few points regarding n-type extrinsic semiconductor. It comes into being when pentavalent impurities are added. After addition. extra free electrons come into being and uh, this uh, extra free electron concentration is nearly equal to impurity concentration n n is equal to nd nd means donor impurity concentration n n means free electron concentration in n type slab notice there exists some free electron concentration in the slab intrinsic semiconductor prior to the addition of impurities but it is small it is small enough that it can be neglected when neglected free electron concentration in the slab is equal to impurity atom concentration if it is not neglected then free electron concentration in the extrinsic semiconductor becomes equal to intrinsic carrier concentration plus impurity concentration free electrons are more in number and hence they are called majority carriers holes are small in number and hence they are called minority carriers now come to p type extrinsic semiconductor when trivalent impurities are added intrinsic semiconductor becomes p type extrinsic semiconductor in these semiconductors extra holes are created hole concentration is nearly equal to impurity concentration pp equal to na na means impurity concentration p type impurity concentration pp means hole concentration in p type material note it is nearly equal hole concentration is nearly equal to impurity concentration what happens is prior to addition of impurities there exists certain hole concentration in the slab it is equal to intrinsic carrier concentration it is small of course when impurities are added one hole comes into being for each impurity atom that is added so addition of impurities gives rise to certain holes whose concentration is equal to impurity concentration after addition now we have two types of holes holes that are existing prior to addition of impurities and holes that are created due to addition of impurities this two together is hole concentration in the slab but uh, intrinsic concentration hole concentration is so small it can be neglected then hole concentration is simply hole concentration due to impurity addition therefore but hole concentration due to impurity addition is equal to impurity concentration therefore hole concentration becomes equal to impurity concentration and it is approximation holes are more in number and hence they are called majority carriers free electrons are small in number and hence they are called minority carriers so holes are majority carriers in p type semiconductors electrons are minority carriers impurities some points regarding impurities donor or n type impurities donor impurity concentration is indicated by nd this stands for donor these are pentavalent materials phosphorus arsenic antimony these are examples allowed energy levels are created below conduction band 
this is energy band diagram this is conduction band this is valency band this is band gap energy allowed energy levels below conduction band means this particular edge it moves slightly below below to its earlier position result is gap decreases when gap decreases there is more, more possibility for valence band electrons to move to conduction band resulting in more number of free electrons more conductivity acceptor p type impurities donor impurity concentration it is not a donor it is acceptor acceptor impurity concentration is indicated by na these impurities are trivalent materials aluminum boron gallium indium these are widely used materials allowed energy levels are uh, created above valence band ea so this is ea allowed band means this edge moves slightly upwards it goes slightly upwards net result is gap band gap decreases therefore there is more possibility for a valence band electron to jump into conduction band resulting in more free electron concentration consequently more conductivity one point to be mentioned here these impurities these are meant for silicon and germanium in case of gallium arsenide these impurities do not work semi conductors conductivity this is the aspect we are going to discuss in this slide conductivity of semiconductors can be adjusted through thermal excitation optical excitation electrical excitation and doping these four methods can be divided into two first three into one last one into another lot of similarity is there among the first three methods what is that similarity consider energy band diagram of a semiconductor this is valency band this is conduction band conductivity increases when free electron concentration goes up free electron concentration goes up when valency band electrons move to conduction band but valency band electrons can move to conduction band only when they are supplied with energy energy which is equal to band gap energy at least it must be equal to band gap energy then only valence band electron can move to conduction band this energy required energy to move valence band electron to conduction band electron can be in the form of heat then it is called thermal excitation it can be in the form of light then it is called optical excitation it can be in the form of uh, radiation light is also a form of radiation another way is using a voltage source connecting a voltage source across the slab one can supply energy so in all these methods either thermal excitation or in optical excitation electrical excitation or by radiation radiation when i say radiation i mean by the fall of uh, a wave electromagnetic wave over the surface of the semiconductor so all these uh, methods or techniques are different ways of supplying necessary energy to the valence band electrons to jump to conduction band now last one doping in doping what happens is in terms of energy band diagram allowed energy levels are created either below conduction band or above valence band edges it results more and more electrons it facilitates more and more electrons jumping from valence band to conduction band rising 
the conductor. Doping can also be understood in another way. Doping creates, generates free electrons or holes depending upon the type of impurities. When electrons are created, holes are created, naturally conductivity goes up. This is another way of changing the conductivity. There is one basic difference between first set of methods and the last one. Last one, impurity addition, induced conductivity variation. It is somewhat permanent or semi-permanent affair. Once impurities are added, conductivity goes up and this uh, increased conductivity remains permanently. It is not so in case of conductivity rise to thermal excitation, optical excitation, electrical excitation or by radiation. For example, if you give energy by means of heat, more and more electrons move into conduction band, conductivity increases, okay. But once you remove the heat source from the slab, what happens is the increased concentration of electrons, it comes back to its preheated state. So conductivity also comes back. Similar is the case with the optical excite. When light falls, conductivity goes up, but when light source is removed, conductivity comes back to pre-excitation level. Similar is the case with electrical excitation. With this understanding, consider we consider a few points like in the first three cases, energy is supplied to electron to jump to conduction band and increase in the number of free electrons is equal to increase in holes. This is one aspect. This is one special feature pertaining to the first three. Increase in the number of electrons is equal to increase in number of holes, but in the last method of uh, varying uh, conductivity, it is not so. In the last case, the gap energy is reduced so that it is easy for electrons to jump to the conduction band and increase in number of free electrons and holes is equal to impurities are added. Here equality is between impurities and free electrons or holes that are added. Some more points regarding conductivity. There is a law, Ohm's law in point form. This law is J equal to sigma E. E is field intensity or potential gradient. J is current density. Sigma is conductivity. What is current density? It is related to current I. I is amperes. J is amperes per meter square. Current density is current per unit cross-sectional area. Its units are amperes per meter. Then what is conductivity? It is, symbol is sigma, it is E. E is 1.6 into 10 power 19, minus 19. N, free electron concentration, mu N, mobility of electrons plus P, pole concentration. Mu P means mobility of poles. This is sigma. Units are moles per meter. Conductivity is units are moles per meter. Resistivity symbol is rho. It is 1 by sigma conductivity with units ohms per meter. Notice this is the expression for conductivity of a semiconductor slab. In case of metals, this part is absent. Some more points regarding temperature dependence of conductivity. The conductivity of semiconductors increases with carrier concentration, which in turn general increases with temperature. So, semiconductor materials have a positive temperature quotient of conductivity. The relation between conductivity and temperature is exponential. However, there is an exception. In a heavily doped semiconductor, the mobility of the carriers decreases with the increase in temperature, resulting in negative temperature quotient. The variation of conductivity with the temperature has some important applications in the form of thermistors and sensistors. A few points regarding generation and recombination. In a semiconductor, it may be intrinsic or extrinsic as long as it is above 0 degree Kelvin. 
two phenomena keep on happening continuously, eternally. These two phenomena are generation and recombination. Generation means electron coming out of covalent bond, creating a free electron and a hole. Recombination means electron, free electron falling back into the vacancy that exists in a covalent bond or into a hole, resulting in the disappearance of electron hole pair. One point to be kept in mind is generation is associated with absorption of energy, recombination is associated with release of energy. With this uh, in mind, let us move to see what is given here. At room temperature, most of the valence electrons are locked in covalent bonds and hence are not free. When they are provided with sufficient energy, at least equal to band gap energy, they come out of bond leaving a vacancy behind called hole and becomes free. Net result is generation of free electron hole pair to carriers. After coming into being, free electron and hole travel some distance and live for some time before they encounter hole and a free electron. Free electron encounters a hole, hole encounters a free electron. Before free electron encountering a hole or hole encountering a free electron, they may encounter ions of the semiconductor material or they may encounter carriers of same type, free electron, free electron, hole and hole. In such case, collision happens, they get rebounced, bounced back and keep on moving. When free electron meets a hole, they combine each other releasing some energy nearly equal to band gap energy. This process in which electron hole disappear, disappears is called recombination. Generation and recombination continues to happen in all semiconductors at all times provided temperature is above absolute zero. Average time gap between generation and recombination of a free electron or hole is called mean lifetime. Average time gap. Individual electrons or individual holes, they have different uh, lifetimes. Individual lifetimes are not that much important, but average lifetimes are important. Average lifetime of electrons are different from average lifetime of hole, and also average lifetimes change from material to material. The average distance a free electron or hole travels between generation and recombination is called diffusion length L. This parameter also is different for electrons and holes. Average diffusion length is an important quantity. It varies from material to material. Thermal generation is explained through a diagram here. Crystal structure of silicon, four electrons in the outer orbits, four. Here also four, four covalent bonds. Each atom is surrounded by four covalent bonds. Its four outer orbital electrons are in the four covalent bonds. They are not free. So free electrons are not available. So conductivity is zero. But this state of affairs exists only at zero degree Kelvin. When surroundings temperature is above zero degree Kelvin, what happens is in the surroundings, heat energy comes into being. It exists. These electrons then may take energy, possibility is there to take energy from the surroundings, from the heat that exists in the surroundings. With that energy, they may come out. Here it is shown. Electron which was here may take energy from the surroundings heat and comes out, come out. When it comes out, a vacancy is left behind in the covalent bond. This vacancy is a hole. And when electron comes out of the covalent bond, it becomes free. It is a free electron. So once coming out means a free electron has come into being and hole also. Hole is a positive electron. Effectively, it acts as a positively charged electron. It is mobile. Free electron is mobile. Hole is mobile. So these two contribute to increase of conductivity. Here, free electron hole pair is generated due to 
supply of heat energy. That's why it is called thermal generation. Some points regarding p-type semiconductors. It consists of high concentration of poles and very small concentration of free electrons. Free electron concentration is even lesser than intrinsic concentration Ni. When p-type impurities are added, they go into the crystal structure and display some of the semiconductor atoms. The three electrons that exist in their outer orbits go to occupy the positions left by the displaced semiconductor atom in the covalent bonds, however, leaving one vacancy or hole in the bond. As each impurity atom gives rise to one hole in this region, there exists large amounts of positively charged mobile holes whose concentration is nearly equal to dopant concentration. When impurity concentration, that is number of impurity atoms per unit volume is Na, then carrier concentration in this semiconductor become PP0. PP0 means hole concentration in P-type semiconductor under equilibrium conditions. It is equal to Na impurity concentration. NPO is equal to Ni square by Na. This relation can be derived very easily using mass action law. N-type semiconductor. It is characterized by existence of huge concentration of free electrons and small concentration of poles, even lower than the intrinsic concentration Ni. When n-type impurities are added, they go into the crystal structure and display some of the semiconductor atoms. Out of the five electrons that exist in their outer orbits, four goes to occupy the positions left by the displaced semiconductor atom in the covalent bonds. Remaining one electron, which is loosely bound to the impurity atom, requires very little energy to make it free. It can have that energy from the surroundings and become free within no time. As each impurity atom gives rise to one free electron in this region, there exist large amounts of negatively charged electrons whose concentration is nearly equal to dopant concentration. When the impurity concentration, the number of impurity atoms per unit volume is Nd, then carrier concentrations in this region are Nn0 is equal to Nd, Pn0 is Ni square by Nd. N and not means free electron concentration in N slab under equilibrium condition. Of course, it is nearly equal to Nd. P and not means whole concentration in N slab under equilibrium condition. Using mass action law, it can be shown equal to Ni square by Nd. With this, we come to the end of this session. Before closing down, let us recollect important aspects that are touched upon in the present session. Mainly, it is about uh, conductivity of semiconductors, how conductivity can be raised, what are the available methods, and also about P-type semiconductors, N-type semiconductors, and uh, their concentration levels. Hope this session is useful to you. We meet again in another session with a new topic soon.